Hello fellow YouTubers, and welcome to part one of the new series on this channel, The Ruby Nuzlocke. Yeah, there's a reasoning behind why I chose Ruby, and it's really just color coordination, really. Um, green, leaf green, pretty obvious. Silver would be a completely different color, and if I chose Emerald, a completely different version, I'd have two greens. The only reason this matters, sorry for getting into this so early, but the only reason this matters is because I'm color coordinating a list. So the versions being different colors really works out for me, basically. And I know that I just started a silver Nuzlocke less than a month and a half ago, and really, I think it was on the first episode. I had decided that I was going to do a Ruby Nuzlocke at some point. And look, here we are. So that's why this is here. I also wanted a new gameplay series. So we got Ruby. We got Ruby. I can't play DS games. I don't have a DS emulator or anything. So this will be the final Pokemon Nuzlocke on this channel. If you're reading this, I'm sorry, I'm clicking through it, I don't read it. I I've read it too many times. So, to go over the rules of the Nuzlocke that I follow. If your Pokemon faints, they are dead. This is standard. If you don't do it, you're not playing a Nuzlocke. Okay, you're not. And then, okay, pick boy or girl, we'll be a boy. I'm also going to use the rule that you have to give all your Pokemon nicknames because it, it's it's just a nice rule, really. There's no reason to not do this rule. I suck at nicknames, pretty sure most people who play do. But once in a while you get a, go a few good ones and that's kind of the fun of the game. Now, another rule I follow is the trainer ID number rule. And this is a rule I don't see many other people following. What you do is you look at your trainer ID. Now if the last number in your ID is a 1 through 3, you pick the grass starter. If it's 4, 5, 6, you pick the fire starter. And if it's 7, 8, 9, you pick the water starter. And if it's a 0, you get to pick freely. So, I am pulling for anything but a 1, 2, or 3. And we got a seven! Sorry. Mudkip, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet on this channel, but Mudkip is my favorite Pokemon of all time. Torchic is amazing, I'm not taking anything away from him. Mudkip is, and always will be, my favorite Pokemon without a doubt. So we got really lucky there, I forgot to mess with the options, but we got Mudkip, and Mudkip is beyond OP in this game. Okay, and we got time, so I'll break it down for you. Why is Mudkip OP? Because Mudkip is a water ground type. And I know that seems very obvious, but I don't think people quite understand how good a water ground type is. You figure the first gym is a water gym. The second gym is a fighting gym, which he will do fine in. Okay, there's two, three... There, there's quite a few Pokemon you can pick before then that can handle the flying gym. Then you have the electric gym, which in any other Pokemon game would be a no-no for your water starter. But, by then he evolves into Marsh Chomp. When he becomes Marsh Chomp, the electric types can't even hit him. So, he's super effective and will slaughter the gym. The fourth gym, if you're unaware, is a fire-type gym, which water and ground are super effective against. Then, to continue that madness pattern, you go to the fifth gym, where it's a normal-type gym, but there is an easy trick that I pray I get to use. I've read about it, and if it works, I will... I will be the happiest guy in the world because 
straight up from the beginning of this, I, I think I should just go to the neighbor's house first. The fifth gym is the well, the second spot on this Nuzlocke I'm afraid of. Before I continue with this rant, um, every Nuzlocke I pick three areas that I am most afraid of for a Nuzlocke. Um, for this Nuzlocke, it will be the battle with May before you reach Mauville City. That's number one. Then it will be the battle against your dad for the fifth gym badge, because that battle always screws me. And believe it or not, number three is for the seventh gym badge against Tate and Liz, because they are the absolute most pants-shittingly scary. <sighs> Just don't even make me go into detail. So regardless, back to the rant. Okay, the sixth gym badge is a flying gym. And you want to know how you can handle a flying gym? By using an ice move, which Mudkip by then can learn. Bam! Crisis averted. Seventh gym? Psychic type. But their aces both use... Are, well, they're both rock types, basically. And let me just check make sure none of them are shiny. You always gotta check that. So, a Surf by then pretty much handles business. But, to even add on to that, which I don't even know if that's physically possible, um, in Ruby, the opposing team uses fire types the entire time. Which means Mudkip is even better. Mudkip is without a doubt the best Pokemon. Like, there is not a single other Pokemon, I think, in the history of Pokemon games, that the games are so biased for. I don't think it's ever happened that good. I just don't think so. So we got Mudkip, and I don't know if I've told the story on this channel yet. The name Mudlup is a combination of Mudkip and Piplup. And it, it's got assonance, so it works. So, as I think is the trend, I don't remember if I named... No, I think I named Charmander Firestarter. I'm going to name Mudkip Mudlup. Pretty self-explanatory. My favorite Pokemon. You know, so that's the idea here. Now, to continue on with my rules of the Nuzlocke that I follow, first encounter is what you use. I don't use the Dube's Claws. And the reasoning behind that is I've seen it be such an annoyance when I've watched Nuzlocke's. Basically, you have somebody who, I'm not going to say if they're good or bad, they, like, okay, you see a zigzagoon here, okay, they catch it, that, that sound, you know, nuzlocking, then, oh, I should have battled him, then, later on, they'll run into another zigzagoon, well, why would I want two zigzagoons, they say, well, the reason you want two zigzagoons is in case the first zigzagoon dies. It's also to actually add difficulty to the game, which, in all seriousness, is the point of a Nuzlocke. And it's so irritating, I've seen Nuzlockers do it, where they will run into the same Pokemon and the first words out of their mouth will be, Doob's Claws. Like, it's like, I'm trying to think what they do. Like, when you do, like, um, when you lie. You're like, oh, I promise I'm telling the truth, and you cross your fingers, like, like that's, it, it's childish, is what I'm saying. And I hate it, and it beats the purpose of a Nuzlocke. Why do a Nuzlocke if you're going to be bending the rules for yourself? If you don't want to do a Nuzlocke, don't do a Nuzlocke. And I'm sorry for the rant, but I've seen it happen on so many Nuzlocks, and it, honestly, it pisses me off. Because as a viewer, I am insulted by that. It's like, really, you're, you're pick and choosing what you want to use. No. We're not, we're not doing that, okay? We might end up with a box full of freaking zigzagoons. And you know what, by, by my count, that's fine. Because you know what, those zigzagoons have pickup. And that makes them worthwhile. They are also good HM slaves. So, we are not doing that. We are going to forget about the dupes clause. I'm trying to think of other Nuzlocke rules I follow. Now I'm not gonna lie, okay, I said I won't, that I always do first encounter. 
I'm going to redo Route 101 and 103, simply because you don't have Pokeballs yet. It's really not fair to cut off two routes, and I know I just went on a rant saying how you can't bend the rules of a Nuzlocke, so that way you do better. But, I really don't think there's much choice. If not, okay, say you had, Tor oh, it, it doesn't work in this game. If you had, like, Charmander, and you're about to battle Brock, you know, you're gonna screw yourself by not allowing yourself to use Pokemon caught on the first two routes. Which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Just... Just use them. Because it's ridiculous not to. You're, you're just setting yourself up too hard. And really... I, I'm, I'm gonna say this, and it's probably gonna get a few people looking at me like, What the fuck? A Nuzlocke isn't that difficult. And I say that in... Knowing my luck, I will end up failing this Nuzlocke after, you know, doing well on the Leaf Green, and so far I've done pretty well on the Silver Nuzlocke. So, I'm going to say that, and I'm going to end up destroying it, but there are harder playthroughs. A Nuzlocke is like, like just a few steps higher than a standard playthrough, really. And when, when you cripple yourself like that, you're... You're just hurting yourself, really. So, I am catching Pokemon on the first two routes. It, it'll probably only end up being like a zigzagoon. But, you know, it is what it is. And I hate that expression because my stepdad says it all the time, and it, it means nothing. That's what that expression means. It means nothing. It is what it is. It sounds so wise, doesn't it, until you realize you literally just said nothing. Like, it was what it was. No shit. Sorry for all the profanity. I'm getting tired. And the profanity is just oozing out of me. So, we got our Pokédex. Which is a pretty good place to start. Yeah. I'm hoping that we can make three encounters on this video. That's the goal. I always say that on the other Nuzlocke. And speaking of which, if you stumble across this Nuzlocke and you haven't subscribed to me before, subscribe. Because, for real, you would not believe how little subscribers I get. Like, I wasn't sure if I got Pokeballs or not. Granted, maybe I don't deserve the subscribers. Maybe doing a Nuzlocke in this day and age is just stupid. But, I wanted to. What can I say? I am pretty stupid, so. I also won't be fast-forwarding on screen. And again, this is something that I've I've just seen people do so stupidly. I watched this one guy do a Nuzlocke, and the only reason I even subbed to his channel was because he advertised on uh, the King Nappy 92 video. And I figured, what the hell? And so I subscribed to him. This is the first encounter for Route 101, and it is a worm pole. So I figured, what the hell? And I subscribed to him, and... No kidding, he got to, I think it was, the third gym, and that was when I started watching, was when he was at the third gym, and the first part I watched, he died. Not only that, he went back in with the same team, which, okay, I get going back in, but you're, you're again, you're just breaking the rules of the Nuzlocke, but regardless, he fast-forwarded and didn't see, I think he got confused, and he didn't see that because it was fast forwarding. You know, he was using the speed up button, and because of that, he lost. So I refuse to be one of those people doing that. I understand how it kind of slows the action down, and I can see people not liking that, but it's also kind of stupid to speed up a gym leader. So, what should we name our male Wurmple? Well, I really don't know, being as he could evolve into Beautifly or Dustox. And that's something I really don't like about Wurmple, because you don't know going in, but it's also kind of something cool. So, we're just gonna name him... Um... It's gotta be something new. Um, we're just gonna name him... Boggy. Because I'm not creative. Boggy. I named him Boggy. That was stupid. Boggy! Yeah, screw it, I'm running with it. Boggy. We're naming him Boggy. 
So I'm not going to use the fast forward button. And if it's too slow paced for you, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do that. It, it really irritates me when people do it because it destroys the Nuzlocke, really. And I'm sorry if you feel otherwise, but that's how I feel. And this is my Nuzlocke. So get over it, <laughs> which might seem kind of douchey, but it's just the facts. If I do something that irritates you, feel free to comment because I will read the comment. And if I agree with you on that, I will take into consideration. And if I don't, then I will respond with why I don't like it. So there you go. If that isn't an identification for how this channel is going to go, I don't know what is. This is the third Nuzlocke on this channel. The Silver Nuzlocke is currently going, and the Leaf Green Nuzlocke was completed, but I also learned how to continue it. So at some point, I will continue it. Now, I caught a female Zigzagoon, and Zigzagoon is based off of a raccoon, correct? And my grandmother is obsessed with raccoons, so... We're just going to name it Martha, which is the name of my grandmother. <laughs> there you go, YouTube. Now you know something new about me. Hope you guys love that. And we can finally go over here. I forgot we had running shoes. I'm so used to the silver Nuzlocke. Now, I believe Route 102 is the same throughout. I think Gen 4 added in where you can change the ratio depending on the part. So we're going to make our first encounter here, and we're going to pray for Ralts. But we're probably not going to get Ralts, which is fine by me. And we got another worm pool. And you know what? We're going to catch this other worm pool. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have both of them. Now, an, a thing I do on my Nuzlocks is I catch a bunch of Pokemon in the beginning, and then I form the team around them, and it, it works really well actually. So hopefully we'll get one worm pool evolve in the Beautifly and one to evolve in a Dust Tox. And then basically, whichever one I think is helping out more, we'll keep in the team. We're also going to have them having adverse names. The other one was called Boggy. We're going to name this one Buggy. So now there will always be a differentiate a difference. <laughs> I'm trying to overcomplicate it. There's always going to be a difference between the two. And basically now, under normal circumstances, I would put the other Pokemon in the team and grind a bit. But when I started the Silver Nuzlocke, I created a new rule for myself that each video would be 25 minutes long, not longer and not too much shorter. You know, there's there's been outliers, but in general, I've been pretty good with that rule. And I really like that rule because I feel like under like 20 minutes, you don't accomplish anything. And then if it's over like 25 minutes or so, it becomes really boring to watch. So... I'm not going to cut the video off, we're just going to keep going, and Mudlup is going to FSU. So, sorry if that bothers you, sorry if it's boring, not much I can do. If you want me to stop and grind up four levels for everybody else, then I'll do that. But it just does not seem fun for me, and I feel like it's a lower quality video if I do. So, there you go, and you're going to learn quickly that I rant like a boss. So get used to that too. I I'm going to also reiterate freaking subscribe. And I know I'm I'm like getting irritable the more I record. And that's because I record in my closet. And my my house in general, well my room, gets really hot. And I don't even think my parents quite understand what I mean when I say my room gets hot. Because I said because I've been saying it for a while now, and I took the family thermostat out of the living room, and I brought it upstairs and set it in my room, and it says 85 degrees, which granted, I don't think is correct, but still, it, you figure the closet's going to be hotter, it's a small closet, clothes, I'm a bigger guy, and then you add on to that fact that there's a warm laptop in here. And you kind of figure out why I get so hot and irritable sometimes. And when things start going my start going against me, I will probably get irritable if I'm not already. <laughs> so, there's that. 
I also have a nice little water bottle here, Nirvana water, because, yeah, Nirvana water, because Nirvana is the greatest rock band of all time. There's your Kanye West reference for today. I was playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 the other day. Yeah, because I play that too. And I ran into this guy, and his name is Kurt Cobang. <laughs> I don't know why I loved it. I added him as a friend, and he's so horrible. But yeah. Feel free to, to add me if you're on PSN at any point. Just, I guess, comment your, your username or whatever, or message it to me. That's probably the better way to go. Be warned, though, due to the stupid way YouTube does messages, I probably won't see your message. There's that. I don't check my messages very often because I don't get messages very often. So, if you message me and I don't respond, it's truly and sincerely not personal because I try to respond to all my messages. But sometimes the messages don't pop up. Sorry. Again, not personal. Nobody should be offended by it. But that's the way it goes. So, there you go. And we're just... I said earlier Mudlup is going to smash, and he is. Mudlup don't lie. I told you guys when we got Mudkip that he was going to dominate. Actually, these are orange berries, and they might come in handy at some point. I'm not going to stop and pick berries most of the time, but early on in the game, orange berries, it's worth it. This girl talking about her career, right? The best trainer. Help me further my career. I always remember her because she's so stupid. And when you beat her, she's like, I ended up helping you further your career. I'm like, no duh. I'm the greatest trainer of all time. I am PC. And you are NPC. What were you expecting to happen? And truly, I feel like Gen 3 is when Pokemon games actually became like a serious thing. And I know I'm going to get some flack for that. Feel free to, you know, flack away on me. But, Gen 1 was very broken, and people don't like admitting it, but it was. And that's not me hating on Gen 1. I, I did a Gen 1 Nuzlocke. I, I've done one in a, in a more serious sense before, but I didn't finish it. But, Gen 2, while less broken, was still relatively broken. And... It was Gen 3 when each Pokemon actually became different, in my opinion. You know, you, you start off the game and you have, instead of just Zigzagoon, you know, because before it was, you know, you'd have, you have your normal type, you'd have your flyer. And then it was pretty much just, after that it was just a hodgepodge of whatever. Well, you have your normal type and then you have your dark type dog to counteract that. Then you go and you figure, okay, okay. So you think, and you're like, well, what about, you know, your, your Pokemon later on, right? Well, here's what I picture when I think Pokemon later on. I think of Trapinch, and I don't know why, he's just what I think. I feel like Ralts is a better version of Abra. I feel like, like, Halo and Wingull are brilliant. Shroomish is brilliant. Wormpole is pretty brilliant. You got Ninkata, which is pretty brilliant. You have all these great idea Pokemon. And they all showed up at the exact same time. I've done two videos where I've averaged out Pokemon. And in both videos, Gen 3 won. Gen 3 is, in my opinion, the best when it comes to new Pokemon being introduced. Even, like, Zigzagoon, I think he's probably the weakest out of any of the normal types. He's still pretty darn cool. And if you don't like him, you got Poochiena. Bam! Crisis averted. Halo, relatively weak when you compare to Pidgey and, and Starly and more recently, um, what's his stupid name? Vosna to Fletchender and Talonflame. Can't think of his name. But even he, you know, Taylor's pretty weak. But then you got Wingo on top of that. You know, 
even all the starters are great. I'm sorry that this video is running over. Sorry. I'm also going to warn you, I do a lot of off-screen training. Probably more than than like any other YouTuber, really. And it, it's... I try not to overtrain, but I like having my team at the same level. So, the warning is there, and I'm going to wrap up once the dad's done talking, so I'll just start wrapping up now. If you've enjoyed the video, leave me a like, comment, share if you're into that, subscribe, and really, yeah, subscribe. And I don't have much else to say, so peace out, I'm Skillets.